So um, this is not about a new cutting edge framework called different.js. Sorry about that, you can leave if that's what you're expecting. Uh, I wanna talk about how we get better at things over time. Um, and I think some of us maybe have this perception that this is kind of how it works. Um, you kind of, you start learning something, you practice it, practice makes perfect. Over time, you get better and better, uh, kind of at a steady rate. Um, I don't think that's actually how it works. I think it's more like this. So uh, you start learning something. So you start learning Node or jQuery or whatever. And uh, you have this like initial like super rush of information, right? Like every 10 minutes, you're kind of WTFing and learning things and, and like upping your game really quickly. Uh, and then over time, you start getting more comfortable, you start getting familiar, and uh, your rate of productivity probably increases, your rate of learning probably decreases, and at some point, you kind of start plateauing. You're not really learning much. Um, and then something happens and kind of kicks you out of your rut, um, and you start learning again. You start uh, trying out some new library, or you read some awesome blog post that kind of exploded your brain a little bit, or you went to an awesome conference talk, um, that kind of thing. Um, and, but then, again, you start plateauing, and then kind of rinse and repeat, right? This, this, this process happens over and over again. This is definitely uh, resonates with me as how I feel like I learn. I, I plateau, and then I, something kicks me out of my, of my rut, and I start learning again. Um, so this is kind of leveling up, right? This is, I think, in my mind, this is where this, this fits with that kind of concept of like, ding, ding, leveling up to the next level. Um, so, I want to get better at stuff over time. I'm sure all you guys do. Uh, how do we get better at stuff? How do we get better at getting better at stuff over time? Um, I say that one way of doing that is to look for more opportunities to kick yourself out of a rut and level up. So um, this talk is, is going to be about how to kick yourself out of that rut um, more often. So a really common way of doing this, uh, one that's kind of pretty well known, is like, oh, learn a new language. Um, you know, you should be learning a new programming language every year. Uh, and I think it's definitely true, right? If you're a JavaScript programmer day to day and you go off and learn Progol or like play with Haskell for a couple of days or whatever, I think this is a great way of kicking you out of your rut because it, by going somewhere else, when you look back at where you were, it looks different. You, you, you get a gain, you, you, you gain a new perspective of the thing that you were standing next to uh, the day before. Uh, another kind of analogy maybe is you kind of you stretch your brain a little bit like a rubber band. Um, when you let go, it's, uh, it snaps back, but it doesn't snap back all the way. So you're kind of, your brain has expanded a little bit. So you take the things that you learn over here and you can now apply them in your day-to-day -day job. So I think that's very true. Uh, I definitely recommend learning more programming languages. But I want to talk a little bit about how I think we can find opportunities, manufacture opportunities to level up uh, as JavaScript developers without leaving JavaScript. Um, for all its warts, it's a pretty cool language, and it's what we use day to day. Um, so how do we level up without leaving JavaScript? And I'm going to talk more about that, uh, talk about kind of introducing artificial constraints. So um, even though we don't have to do something a certain way, let's try doing it a certain way anyway uh, to try and kind of form more of these opportunities to, to level up. Uh, my name is Pete. Uh, like I said, I'm going to be going really fast, so if... Uh, if you want to argue with me about this later, uh, I'm on Twitter, PH1. Uh, that's my cell phone number. <laughs> <laughs> Moving on. Um, and also, if you want to talk to me about ThoughtWorks, obligatory plug, we're hiring. Uh, so I want to talk about the this keyword. Uh, this is how I feel about this quite often. I feel like this about this because of things like this. Uh, so things like this make me a little bit embarrassed to be a JavaScript developer and a little bit sad inside. So we're taking uh, this and then we have to rebind it to self because inside of the context of the button calendar, of course, this is bound to something else. Makes perfect sense, right? Um, we all have Stockholm Syndrome if we think that this is okay. <laughs> um, so, so yeah, I, I really, really actually have kind of a love-hate relationship, more of a hate relationship with this. Um, and maybe you guys find it less annoying and frustrating than I do, but I think we can all agree it's not a perfect feature of the language. The confusion around lexical scoping and binding rules uh, is a little bit at odds with the rest of the language. Um, so given that fact, it's not perfect, and given the fact that we're looking to artificially kind of introduce opportunities to level up, uh, let's try writing JavaScript without this. 
Um, this might not be something we want to do in production code. Maybe it is. Um, but it will give us an opportunity to look at this, what we do today in a different light. So I want to talk about this and getting rid of this. In order to talk about this, we need to talk about why it's used. If we talk about why it's used, we need to talk about OO. Uh, to talk about OO, object-oriented programming, we need some kind of definition. This is my working definition. Uh, OO is about kind of state and behavior traveling together through time. Sounds pretty impressive, right? Uh, so what do I mean by that? Uh, here's George. Uh, George uh, has two abilities. He can eat cake. Uh, or this person type can eat cake, uh, and we can ask it if it's still hungry. So that's our API. Um, and this is how our API kind of works in, in the world. We, we create an instance of George, um, and then our program runs, and then at some point later on, uh, George eats a cake. Um, and then at some point later on in the program, um, we ask George if he's still hungry. So pretty standard stuff, but what's, I think, implied here, but maybe we've internalized so much that we've forgotten about it, is like these are all kind of joined together in time, uh, even though they're all, they're all joined together, even though they're, they're at distinct points in time. Um, so that's what I mean when I say state and behavior. So uh, when, when George eats cake up there, uh, he's modifying his state, and then that behavior that I call the still hungry behavior, that function method that I call, knows about the state. So the state and the behavior are traveling together in this object. So this is kind of a, a classical, uh, prototypical way of implementing um, this API or this interface in, in JavaScript. Uh, we, in our constructor, we create a property, set it to zero, uh, we eat some cake and then bump up that property, and then when we want to know if we're still hungry, we, we check the value of that, of that property on the object. Um, pretty straightforward, lots of uses of this. And uh, I remember, our goal here is to, to get rid of this, uh, at least for the context of learning, uh, stretching our brains. So um, how could we do this a different way? Uh, so here's a implementation that will uh, work almost exactly the same, but it's not using this, and it's not using prototypes. Uh, it's using closures instead. So again, I uh, have a kind of a constructor function type thing that creates uh, object literals in this case, and I have a closed over cakes eaten variable, and when I want to eat a cake, I bump that variable up, and when I'm, I want to check if I'm hungry, I look at the state of that variable. So in the previous example, what was binding things together through space and time uh, was, was, was this, and prototypes. Um, in this case, closures are, are what's used to kind of bind uh, the behavior of still hungry with the state of cakes eaten uh, and, and the behavior of eat cake. So that's how, that's how we're, we're achieving the same, the same goals, but for a different means. So I, it's not really relevant to the talk, this whole thing is space and time, but I didn't really ever realize this until I tried to do it a different way. I kind of had this weird insight about OO through trying to use, uh, use JavaScript with this artificial constraint. Um, so this is, this is what I'm getting at of kind of expanding our minds a little bit and leveling up in OO, even if we're not necessarily using it in a standard way. I'm going to take a slight detour to rail against this. Uh, here's George. Uh, we want George to eat a lot of cake, so we're going to take these four cakes and we're going to pass them into George's um, eat cake method. Uh, of course, after we've done this, George, uh, George shouldn't still be hungry because that's four cakes. That's a lot of cake. Um, but no, uh, still hungry will return true. If we ask George how many cakes he's eaten, it will say zero. Uh, how many of you, or can someone tell me why this is, doesn't work the way we want it to work? Yes, yeah, so of course, we didn't bind uh, this uh, to the right thing in, in the for each loop. So uh, how many... This is, a, this is a, a mean question to ask, but how many people uh, understand that? Right, so a lot of us do, not all of us do. I don't think we should have to understand that. Um, this, this is why I don't like this. As an aside, if we use the closure-based approach, it just works. I don't need to understand binding and lexical scoping and all that stuff. It just works the way I'd expect it to work. So um, I could go on. Uh, you can implement pretty much everything that you do with prototypes in this, using closures, uh, inheritance and mix-ins. There's a few warts, there's a few things that you can't do, there's a few things that are better, like you're not exposing your privates, ask me later. Um, so, but what have we, what have we learned? We've, we've learned that, um, I guess we've learned two things. I've, I've, we've learned that this is annoying, 
or at least I already knew that. Um, but we've also kind of started thinking about things in a different way. So if we don't need prototypes and we don't need this, do we actually need types? Like, there isn't really a type there. It's just object literals. And the object literals happen to have methods on them, but do we need those methods? Maybe we could start just calling functions and passing state around not attached to behavior. So this comes down to, to tools. Um, by looking at things a different way, I now have a new tool in my toolbox. Before, uh, whenever someone asked me to solve a problem, I would reach for uh, prototypes and this. Um, because that was the tool I had available to me. When you have a hammer, everything looks like a nail, right? Um, now I have options. I've got a new tool in my toolbox. That doesn't mean I have to use it all the time. Just because I learn about screwdrivers doesn't mean I have to use a screwdriver when a nail is the right thing to, or a hammer is the right thing to use. But I've got the option. I've expanded my, uh, my abilities. I've, I've leveled up as a programmer. Um, and I don't have to use this new technique, but I've got it in my back pocket now. So this is what I mean by uh, inter introducing artificial constraints um, to understand what tools are out there, to understand what you don't know. That's a really, really big thing to, to, to embrace as a programmer. You're, you, there's loads of stuff you don't know about. Uh, and being, getting to the point that you know that you don't know something is like 90% of the battle, because then you just need to Google it and find this, the Stack Overflow answer. And yeah. I really like the full Stack Overflow developer idea. <laughs> Um, so what other things can you do to level up? So here's, here's kind of a random list I came up with. Um, there's loads of, loads of uh, things apart from this. But this is lots of stuff you could do in JavaScript without leaving your language um, to kind of stretch your brain. So try writing JavaScript where you never return anything. Uh, and I do really mean that. So this is called tell, don't ask. You can do this. It's uh, kind of mathematically proven. Um, and it will hurt your brain a little bit. Um, only use one parameter. Don't allow more than one parameter. Uh, don't allow functions less than, less than five lines long. Um, do everything test, test first. Do TDD 100% of the time. Don't do any tests at all if you do do tests. Um, try writing immutable JavaScript where you're not allowed to mutate any state and you only make copies of things. Um, like I alluded to earlier, don't, uh, don't have methods. Um, just, just use functions and don't have uh, behavior and state traveling together. Instead, use uh, a functional style. Uh, and, and the last one, uh, plug, I actually really w wanted to give like a, an hour-long talk on this, is look into functional reactive programming, streams of magical wonderfulness uh, building your UI. Yeah, I'd like to do an hour on that. But um, I think there's lots, th this is not an exhaustive list. There's loads of artificial constraints you can introduce in uh, not necessarily in your day-to-day -day programming in, in production code, but um, for the fun side projects you do or for the one little uh, project you're working on um, at, at work, to stretch your brain a little bit and um, do more than just learning the next trendy framework, right? Like, I, you're not going to level up as a programmer by learning the different... Well, you'll level up a bit by learning less if you know SAS or vice versa, but... Uh, you're going to get a lot more if you intentionally find uh, constraints and apply them to the way you work. Um, and you'll come out of it uh, a, a better programmer. Um, thanks. And I f I'm amazed that I actually do have time for some questions or general uh, heckling. So, I, so that's a very good question. Why, the question is, uh, why shouldn't we be doing more of this kind of functional stuff in production? I absolutely think we should. Um, but I don't want to freak people out, right? Like I don't want to, like I don't want to sound like a, you know, like a, a, a dogmatic kind of uh, zealot of, of functional programming. There's cases where it doesn't make sense. Um, there's lots of there's lots of reasons why it might not make sense. The, your boss doesn't like it. Your team pushes back on it. You're very very concerned about performance. Lot, lots of different reasons. But I actually I actually really really think that there's loads of stuff you can do in, in a functional style that's that's very very valid for production. Um, but the first step is just to try it out and see, right? Yeah. yeah, so the question is, is there performance implications to the kind of uh, object factory closure approach? Uh, so yes, there are in, in two ways, and I'm going to be intentionally annoying. Um, it is slower for the computer, and it might be faster for the development team. I know which one I want to optimize for. So uh, it might be, it, it definitely is actually slower. If you put side-by-side -side prototypes versus uh, versus closure, it's slow a bit. Part, a big reason is because the the uh, browser makers, the V8 uh, developers, are optimizing for for the code that's in the wild. That's a big. That's a part of it. 
Um, but I don't think it actually matters because most of the time, my um, one of the other the performance one of the performance talks earlier earlier on uh, in in the conference was saying uh, if it's if it's just JavaScript code, you, that's not where your performance bottleneck is. Your performance bottleneck is talking to the DOM, uh, waiting on a network call, uh, waiting for a user to interact, all of that kind of stuff. Like if you drew a graph of object object oriented versus or sorry prototypes versus closure, and then like this is the the difference that uh, any of that other stuff makes. So m almost all the time, it doesn't matter. Thanks.